Hello, ClickUp colleagues. My name is Dr. David Wank, and I'm the CEO of Short Hills Design, which is an internet marketing company uh, for dentists and physicians and other professional service people. And what I was struggling with with ClickUp is a way to organize our web design projects. And our web design projects are generally very straightforward projects, but there are a lot of moving parts, as those of you who build websites know. Now, this is the way I gather how to do ClickUp. I'm not a ClickUp professional. I am your average agency owner who wanted to find a better way. And I did a lot of research online and help from people on the Facebook group. So I thought I would take a minute to share with you what I figured out and what I've done. Hopefully you'll use the comments below and tell me things that I can do better. Or if you're just learning, maybe you'll learn something from me so I can give back a little bit. So let's get started. Our overall process has four, excuse me, has four steps. And the steps are our discovery phase, design phase, development phase, and our launch phase. And I skipped here content because I'm not sure yet if the content is better off. Like I said, it's a work in progress here. I'm not sure if uh, it's, it's better off to have the content in Google Sheets, like we're used to having it, our contact matrix, or is it better to have it in ClickUp? I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna let the team help and let the team decide. I'm very big on letting my team you know, have input in what they do because the team is the one who's doing it every day. I mean, me too, but that's the story. So part of the issue that I had was organizing things and seeing things and there were too, too much going on. And so one of the great tips I got was when it comes to um, setting up your sections, should we do a section per client, a section per project? We have, and it's not shown here, I have a section, a space for web websites. And it says, this, this is the template. But it would probably say, you know, client name dash website, whatever it is. So over here, I have, I took, this has been, we've been doing this for about 15 years. So I've really tightened this process over time. And so what I did is for the discovery phase, I wanted to be able to separate by face in the project. Let me switch this to auto save. So it doesn't keep interrupting us. Okay. And over here, you can see that I have a phase custom field. And the, the reason I did this is because I want to be able to group by these custom fields. One of the biggest pieces of advice I got on Facebook was that use statuses and use custom fields for things that are relevant. If something's not relevant, don't use it as a custom field and we're going to get there. I added a phase step, again, also just another custom field, because what happens, I don't know about you, but with me, sometimes if I try and drag something, it gets very difficult to drag it or it doesn't go in the right place or things get out of order somehow, you know, magically they get out of order. So I have this phase step there that I just made. And so this way, everything is organized. And I'm still deciding whether the best place is to put our uh, um, milestones. Again, I've read the beginning, I've read the end. Maybe in another video, I'll get into that. But again, this is, we're growing together. So here, I just did that as seven. Before I had it as zero, zero, but I wasn't sure. So if we just open up the design phase, let's just take a look. And development and launch phase, you can see that pretty much everything at this level is the same. This is beautiful, this is clean, in my opinion. I can see it, I have an idea what's going on. Terrific. What I also did is sometimes I like to see what's going on by client. And so what I also did, I'm not gonna show it because we have real client names there, but I made another dropdown that has the client name. And so that way I can certainly hide this column because I don't need to see, you know, if I'm in, you know, uh, Short Hills Designs website redesign or whatever we're doing, I don't need to see the client name. But maybe if I wanna see all of the sites that are in discovery or in design, be nice to have the client. So I did, I did add that there. So one of the key things again from Facebook was that the, and YouTube and other places was that make your, your parent tasks. We do a lot of, a lot of work with subtasks. So here, for example, here are some subtasks. I'm not going to read them to you. You can pause this and read. Uh, here are some subtasks that we have that have to get done. And I don't, in the past, we've had it where we have a million tasks or we have 12 phases and it's just too much. My team said there are too many little things and we didn't want to do that. So over here for all of our, and let's just go top level for a moment. All of the parent tasks have the same status. To do backlog, which I'm not sure if I'm going to use in progress, waiting external, waiting internal. Uh, shout out to who it was who, who had that idea. I forgot her name. I will tag her because it was her idea. And um, you know, this could be waiting for the client or waiting for us, it doesn't matter, on hold. And again, this is me, I'm not sure, you know, maybe if, if the team needs me to review something and complete it. Now, if you look, all of these projects, all of these tasks, not projects, have that exact same status. 
because it's relevant to all of them. The problem that I was running into is this. So let's say we had client processing and we had this regrouping by phase and we had that in progress. Okay, but now, or let's say we were, yeah, we had that in progress, but the cover letter was something that was also in progress. And then we had the sending the invoice was where you know, that I had to generate the invoice and now we're waiting for the client. So really, is this parent task in progress or are we waiting? What's our holdup? What's, so if I went like this, what's our overall status? Well, we're waiting for the client for certain things, but we're waiting for me for other things. This isn't really accurate. What's more accurate would be to have this in progress. And now let me get rid of these here, not started. We wanna get rid of that and get rid of this. And then under our subtasks, the subtasks, we're going to have another level of, of to do another level of statuses. And that's what we're going to use to look at our subtasks. So what I did here, let me get rid of this. What I did is I decided to, I don't want this screen to be littered and let me clean that out. I don't want this screen to be littered with a million things going on. I certainly could expand all my subtasks, but I don't want to. So let's go to discovery and let's just bring up that discovery. Here we go. Okay, so now in Discovery, you can see, and here's another key, these um, column headings are different. Now, the project itself, or the, the folder itself, and I am gonna make it for the space, but this folder has all of these, if we go to the column types, you're gonna see under fields, they exist, the ones that we need. But here, I'm just not showing them all. And so the reason I went here in my original view, you didn't see substatus or substep, because it doesn't make sense there. And also the SOPs don't make sense there. We use um, Confluence for our SOPs. So now if we go to client processing, uh, I have demos already. So the status for client processing, this is in progress. So now I know, you know, we assign this to somebody, send the cover letter, that's in progress or that's done. Uh, but you know what, they want me to review it, fine, I review it. Let's look, let's send the invoice that we have to wait, that's not ready yet because, let's say we said, uh, you know, let's say we did it out of order and we sent the invoice, and now we, um, we're waiting here, so there's nothing going on there. And we did convert the lead to a client, but we're waiting now for closed one. So overall, what we can see is this step is in progress and we, we're working on it. And so let's say I did this and I did that. And now we're just waiting now for the client. This is, you know, in progress. We're waiting for the client to, um, we did this, we set it as one, we set it as one. Now we're just waiting for this client to get back to us. If I were to say waiting external, it doesn't really make sense as related to this overall parent task. So let's come to to do. And now this whole entire parent task is waiting external. So now I know my holdup is I'm waiting for the client. And that's why I like to do this system like this. So our internal ones are here I mean for our parent tasks and for the subtasks, that's it. Now, what I also did in the same way that I added steps here, I added another custom field called sub and I'm not sure where's number one. This should be sub one. And the reason I did that, let's clear these out, is because sometimes in a project, as you know, the order matters. So it doesn't make sense to uh, receive the deposit before we've sent an invoice. And again, ClickUp, maybe it's just me, but ClickUp gets out of order for me a lot. So I don't like doing that. So this way I have those if I need them and you can sort by that if necessary. So then internal client setup, exactly the same. Yeah, these I set up too. These don't really matter as much. You don't really need subtasks there, but onboarding, let's see if we did it. Yeah, I ordered it again. And then under the branding meeting, so here's where we have a meeting and you know, we go through everything with the client. These don't need to be in order. I mean, if they get messed up, they get messed up, but that's not something that has to be tied in so uh, rigorously. And so of course now, let's say internal client setup. So let's say we did, the, we, we did this. I'm not gonna complete it because it'll disappear. So let's just say that's completed and then internal client setup that's completed. And now the onboarding, let's see, we have, you know, we sent the client the, we'll put that as completed, but it'll disappear. We sent the client the link to do the form and we're still waiting. So what we need to do is we need to do this in progress because we need to check with the client in seven days that has to get done. And so the onboarding at this point, we are waiting for the client. So in this, these steps are, let's see here, we can just fix these, no problem. There we go. But now again, we can see, and obviously these would be gone. I don't show tasks that are completed, but I'm showing it for you so you can see it doesn't disappear. 
This would be completed, completed. And now what about our onboarding? We're waiting for the client. Okay, so let's see what's going on. Waiting for the client. Oh, and that's why. Now, yes, we're waiting for me and the client, but we said, let's say that's done. So we're waiting for the client. And so the next thing we can do is we're gonna send this, this will have a due date, that obviously if the client doesn't get back to us with the discovery form, you know, in seven days, we send the reminder, hey, do you have any problems? How can we help you? So that is what I did with the, let me clean up this template so I don't have a problem with it later. But that is what I did with our, you know, overall settings for this project. So we can come back here to the template and there we go. And so again, over here, exactly the same thing. Uh, we happen to use oxygen and it's a debate. Should I make this as for, you know, hear the, the, the templates that we use. Should I necessarily make these as a, as individual top level tasks? Of course you could, but then how many times does my team want to check something off? They just build all the templates and then they want to check this off and they're done, then we're good. So why bother you know, running into that? And obviously if I didn't mention it, you can hide this client web column because I just want it there so I can sort by clients. If I'm looking at all the folders in the web, uh, in the, um, the website space. So same thing here. And again, some of this is going to be up to you. You know, here we're, we're building out the contact page and the contact form. Website final approval. Now for here, the content status. We have a content matrix in Google Drive. We will always do a screaming frog run like I'm sure you do too, or an index of what the client had before. So A, we can make sure we copied all the content over that we're copying, and B, we can set up the redirects. So I haven't decided if I want to do this still in Google Sheets, which we're doing now. And again, you can say, this is in progress. And when I see, you know, done, that means this content is done or all the content is done. And that has to be done before the website is approved. Uh, and we'll come back to content in a sec. So here's publish website live. And I do like to bring up, we have the website goes live. Then I have a whole set of steps for the initial live configuration, you know, your robots.txt, texting your, your forms. Then we can take a breath, you know, just make sure, double check that everything looks good. Then some post launch stuff, configure the plugins, this and that. And then I like to do a, an announcement or a case study. So come in, so let's come back to content and then we'll wrap up. So I do not know if this is the right way and I remain <laughs> open to suggestions here, but let's take a look at what I have under content list. And so what I've done, we work with dentists, so I put crowns here. So I like to have, uh, these are standard pages, blog pages and supplemental pages. So blog pages, it's very rare that a client has more than five, six, seven, eight blog posts. So we can just usually handle them and have a new URL. We've moved away from categories just because it's extra lines in the URL, the URI. And, you know, it's, all, it's now common to obviously hide that category in the slug for WordPress. Um, and we are doing WordPress, if I didn't mention that earlier. So, and this is not obviously part of the blog, but it's there just to show. And so I have these all set up as the type of pages. And of course we can come here and hide this. I don't need to see this now right? Because I have an idea of what's going on with my pages. Now, each of these pages certainly can have in progress, you know, what the status is. Maybe the homepage, you know, we're waiting on the client or waiting on my designer to uh, decide if they want to do, you know, green or blue. And here for me at the team, we're waiting for the client to send me some information. And so, but over here, so here's the overall status of the page and it can be completed, but the overall status of the page would be our workflow is let's get rid of this here for a second. Let's make that, blank that out. So what I've got here, and these are just mine. You can certainly do whatever you like. Did we create the page in WordPress? A lot of times we're gonna bring over pages like this crowns page. Okay, we created it, good. Now let's copy over the content. Oh, wait a minute. So we're not sure if we need to, we gotta ask the client a question about what's coming over. So we're waiting for him, but we're keeping all of that. We're not sure. We're getting a new image. Does he own that image? Obviously we've taken care of a lot of that in discovery. I wanna make sure they own the images ahead of time or we have licenses if we get new images, but let's just say, so, oh, okay, the page is created. We added the content. We're gonna pick an image, so this is in progress. Now we've added the images, and now it is ready for review. So let's come over here, ready for review. Now my, the developer wants to check, before you show it to the project manager, I want you to have checked your own work. So we learn in dental school, the 10 minute rule, when you think you're done and you want your work checked, take 10 more minutes and then check it yourself and then go ask for help or get it checked. Project manager reviews it and then okay to publish. And so now we know once we see okay to publish, this can go to completed or once it's published, sorry, see, we're still working on it, but okay to publish, okay to publish. So that means all of these should be, you know, ready for review. And then, oh wait, 
this is not okay to publish. This is has to go back to it needs a fix. So let's come over here to this is, um, let's say this is back in progress or we're waiting for someone on the team to do something because it needs a fix and it's not okay to publish. So now what will happen is they're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. They'll do what they have to do. Now it's in progress and then it's ready for review and then they reviewed it. And so now project manager, you can review it. And again, um, dev review would probably mean the, the developer reviewed it. Um, project manager review probably means it's ready for the project manager review. And then okay to publish means PM has reviewed it. So overall, that's pretty much our, um, my process here. And I think that over here, um, you know, so that's our overall pro. So that's our overall process. I certainly hope that was helpful. And again, um, please go to town in the comments because I'm sure there are things that I could be doing better um, or explaining better. So please do let me know. And again, I am not a click up, click up expert. I'm just a guy who's an expert in other things, but not in this. So you know, my fields are development and SEO and training and teaching and being a dentist. That's what I do. So here, hopefully um, this helps you. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask.